So cars, that's what we're gonna talk about. Cars, trucks, SUVs. From a young age, we've all thought about cars. We've driven in cars. It's how our families have got us places. We've probably even had posters on our wall or pictures on our wall that we fascinate about, that we dream about. That Lamborghini, that Ferrari, that Porsche, whatever it is, we've always thought about cars. Some of us have gone deeper down the rabbit hole than others with Formula One and everything else, and we've just become infatuated with racing. But when you think about cars, those are an interesting thing because they cost money. And we all need to come up with money to pay for cars. And in today's world, the interesting thing is the average cost for a car is over $700 a month. I can't even fathom that. I remember back when I first started my Fat Man board shops, I got my dream truck back then. It was a ZR2 S10. I know, don't fault me. That was a big deal for me. You know how much my payment on that truck was? $198 a month, zero down. Like, look at how we've changed, right? But when you're thinking about buying cars, you gotta think about the most efficient way. There's lots of videos, and I've made a lot of videos on the best ways to buy cars. Not just the negotiating of cars, not just where to go to find cars, but the best way to buy cars. And the best way I've found is the way that gives you all the money back for every single car you ever buy, drive, and own, right? What's better than that? Change one thing and get all the money back for every car you ever buy, drive, and own. But you know what? In today's video, I wanted to show you one better. I wanted to show you how to get all the money back for all the cars you ever buy, drive, and own, but to have somebody else make your car payment. <laughs> I know, sounds too good to be true, right? And the haters are gonna come out and hate on this one because I'm not gonna go deep in the details. I'm just gonna show you the fundamentals of how do you get all the money back for every car you ever buy, drive, and own, and how do you do that by changing one thing and adding one step to what you do already. But then, add the little cherry on top, and that is have somebody else make your car payment. Because why should you make your own car payment? I mean, come on, in today's world, someone else clearly should be paying your car payment, right? Well, that's what we're gonna do. So, let's dive in. So let's dive in. When you're thinking about buying a car, there's really four different ways you can buy a car. You can pay cash for a car, which means you take the money that you work for, you save so much per week, per month, or just in chunks, and when you have enough saved up, you go buy the car. Now, I always say that that's a bad way to buy a car because when you take the money that you've saved and you pay cash for the car, that money, the opportunity for that money to make anything more for you for the rest of your life is gone. You now bought a car, and every car, I got bad news for you, just about every single car will depreciate in value. So therefore, you're buying an asset, a vehicle, that's going to go down in value. So you've literally diminished your earning potential on that money. So I don't like paying cash for cars, but I do want you to understand the fundamental, because that's what we're gonna start with. In order to do what I'm gonna show you, in full disclosure, you have to save up the money to pay cash for the car first, but, you already have this money, which is what I'm going to show you. Not every one of you, but most of you already have this money. It's just not where you think it is. The second way you can buy a car, which is the most common way most of you know, that's finance a car. So you go to a bank or a finance company or the dealer, you find your vehicle and you get approved for a loan. And when they give you the loan, that pays for the car. Maybe you gotta put a little money down, maybe you don't, because you're a good credit citizen. But what you're going to be doing is you're gonna be making monthly payments every month for that car. And every month, you're gonna make a payment. And every month, that payment is gonna be interest and principal, leaving your family forever, in exchange for a vehicle that depreciates in value. So it's a slow burn, okay? The third way you can buy a car, you could lease a car. I hate leasing, but you know, there are some business reasons it makes sense and the payments are a little lower. I did another great video, which you can find, showing you how you can get all the money back for all the cars and also get paid to drive a company car. But that's not for today. Let's talk about leasing, it's simple. You go to the same dealership, you find the car you want, and what you do is you do a lease agreement, which includes interest 
embedded in the lease agreement. And what you do is you make a monthly payment every month that includes interest, usually high, about 8% right now. And then you drive the car for a period of time, two, three, four, however many years your lease is. And then you give the car back and all the money you laid out in payments, gone forever. Fourth way you could buy a car, you could steal it. But today, I'm gonna show you how to combine a couple of those. Number one, paying cash for a car and also financing a car. I'm gonna show you how to combine those two strategies into a strategy that makes sure that every single time you do what I'm gonna show you, you get all the money back. Every penny of the money you spent on the car. No matter how much that car depreciates, you will have all the money back after the term. And what is the term and who sets it? You do. Because what we're gonna be doing today, folks, is we're gonna be taking back control of our money. And we're gonna be taking back control of our money by teaching you how to become your own bank. Now, let's add one little cool fun element. All that sounded great, but a couple things didn't sound good, right? You gotta save up all the money for the car. And in today's example, I'm gonna use a really expensive car. Why? Well, why not? But you just put your numbers in for whatever dollar amount you want to spend on a car. But today, we're gonna buy a used G-Wagon. Why? Because it's fun. And nobody wants to hear how I bought a used Yugo. They wanna hear fun stuff. So in doing that, we gotta add one more dynamic to what we just said. Remember, we're gonna focus on paying cash for a car, which requires you to save that money. Okay, number two, financing a car, which requires you to set up a term of time for the financing three years, five years, six years, you're gonna pick that time and an interest rate that you want to pay. And most of you are thinking, I don't wanna pay any interest. If the interest went back to you, how much interest would you want to earn on your money? That's the key number. And the other thing we're gonna look at is, where are you investing your money today? And how much of a return is it paying? And we're gonna venture into a whole nother world, a world that you hear about, you know about, you see every day, many, many of you are not participating in, and that is called private lending. What we're going to do is we're gonna become the bank on two fronts. We're gonna become the bank with the truck or car or whatever it is you're buying, and we're also gonna become the bank and we're gonna be the lender. Let's dive in. So I wanna break this down into a couple different parts. And one of the suggestions is maybe grab a pen and a piece of paper and just take some notes because I'm gonna go high level. And like I said, if you really wanna get down in the weeds, there's a video in the bio. It's a 90 minute video that walks you through this entire concept, which is called the infinite banking concept. But how do you invest your money? It's the first question I have for you. Do you invest in a 401k? Do you buy stocks, mutual funds? Maybe you are a private lender already. Great. So you understand the return on your money could equal a monthly payment. They call that passive income. Some of you even buy rental properties or real estate. So right now, I just wanna use some numbers. I'm gonna start 159,000, write that down in your pad paper, 159. Let's just say that's our initial base of money that we've saved up. You got 159,000. Now, folks, if you don't have 159,000, don't think that this video is like too advanced for you. I'm just using numbers I had to go with. You could have significantly less. Maybe it's 50 grand, maybe you got 40 grand. This doesn't work for someone that hasn't saved money. So I just wanna be clear. So you've got that money. Now, let's say you took 140,000 of that 159,000 and you were to make an investment and you were to earn 16%. How much interest would that kick off per month? Well, it would kick off $1,866.66. So if you had $140,000 earning 16%, you'd be making $1,866.66. That's your money working for you, okay? So we understand that. Now, where could you find an investment to put 140,000 in that would earn you 16% consistently? Not many places, right? Well, welcome to our world. It's called private lending. There's a site called privatemoneyclub.com. Okay, it's a dating site for money. And as I pulled privatemoneyclub.com up, I looked into the deal section and right there, one of the first deals, it says 16% private money lending opportunity in Houston, Texas. There's deals like this every single day on there. So when you're thinking about 16%, that's where it came from. And that's a first lien deal. So what does first lien mean? Some of you are brand new to private lending. Well, first lien would be when you go into the bank and you want a mortgage for your house. 
the bank is in first position. If you don't pay the bank, they're numero uno. They foreclose on your property. You know this to be true. This is how it works because they're first position. They lend you the money. You make monthly payments back to them. If you don't pay them, they can foreclose because they're first. So first is always good. Ricky Bobby's dad said, if you're not first, you're last. And speaking of being first, let's be the first to click the subscribe button. Hit it, hit it. And then there's a little bell, smash that bell so that every time we put a new video out, you are notified. And after you're done smashing it, just uppercut it and get it right out of the way. All right, so now we understand where you can get a return like that, an interest rate like that. Now you can understand why it would be the same every single month because it's a stated interest rate on a loan you're making. Now, in order to play in this game, you gotta have the money saved. Now, where would that money be? It could be in a 401k. You could take a loan from your 401k and lend it. Not always saying that's a smart place, but let's just start from the bottom. You could have that money saved in a savings account, a money market account. You could have that money in other investments that you wanna sell and take your profits. There's so many places where people have money. Heck, that money might just be sitting in the rafters of your house in the form of hidden equity. Maybe you got equity in your house that's just sitting there. Folks, that's silly. That's like burying money in your walls. Get that money out, 140,000 of that money and send that money to work for you. Now, those are just recommendations. I'm not telling anyone to do that, giving you financial advice, consult with your advisor, attorney, CPA, and all that good stuff if you really wanna know. But I'm just trying to show you how somebody else can pay for your car payment. Because if you did have 140 grand and you lent that 140 grand out at 16%, that's $1,866.66 passive income. What could that be used for? How about a car payment? Well, yeah, how about that? So what if you did go out and you found yourself a G-Wagon, okay, a used G-Wagon? And I ran the numbers and I ran this at 8% interest. At 8% interest over a six-year loan, a G-Wagon through a bank would cost you about 1,255 bucks. This is a used one, okay? We're not buying brand new cars here because we don't want to pay for a brand new car and have it depreciate. So $1,255. So if I had a loan, done through private money club and first lien position, making me $1,866.66, and I took 1,255 of that and I paid for the G-Wagon, I still have $611.66 left. That's how much extra money I would have every single month to just go do whatever you gotta do. Now, how about that? What are your thoughts? Somebody else is indeed paying for that G-Wagon payment. The G-Wagon was financed through a traditional bank in that example. Okay, because all I did is I said, you take 140 grand from somewhere, you lend it at 16%, you get 1866 and you make your car payment and you got $611.66. I didn't teach you anything really cool there, did I? I just showed you that's how you'd get somebody else to make your car payment for you because somebody else is paying you interest on money you had sitting lazy. Now let's go another round. Now, instead of using somebody else's bank to finance that truck, what if we used your own bank? What if we set up your own banking system? Why use Bank of America, Key Bank, Wells Fargo, and all those banks which control our money because we gave up control? Why don't we create our own banking system? Why don't we do the exact same thing? The Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Morgans, the Stanleys, the Walt Disneys, the Ray Crocs. Did you know that Walt Disney financed Disneyland with a loan from his own bank? Do you know that Ray Kroc, when he started into real estate, used his own bank to finance that real estate? Well, what am I talking about, his own bank? You're like, man, Ray Kroc didn't have a bank. I know he didn't, but he thought like a bank. He acted like a bank. Banks let them down. Banks wouldn't finance their dreams, so they went out and took back control. And you know how they did that? Let's come back over here. They changed where their money went first. Now, I don't care how you change this. This could be you change where your monthly savings goes first. This could be where you reduce your 401k contributions down from what you're doing now down to the match and you take and defer the difference into what I'm about to show you. This could just be money that you get in bonuses every quarter at work that you defer where that is. This is just your savings, folks. You change where it goes first. Now, brace yourself. Here's where you're going to put it. You're going to put it into a specially designed Write that down, specially designed and engineered. Okay, got that? Specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy. I know that one's hard to write. 
whole life insurance policy from a mutually owned company that pays dividends. That's what we're going to do. Now, before you get mad and be like, oh, stupid spammers on here always trying to push life insurance, those cheap bastards. There's a reason I said that. The same reason why those wealthy families have used Whole Life. The same reason why banks are the number one purchasers of Whole Life. The same reason why throughout history, privatized banking has been built with Whole Life insurance, specially designed. So, coming back over here, we're gonna change one thing, where your savings goes first. Now, for today's lesson, let's just assume that we got $159,000 that we have saved. Doesn't matter where it was saved, you got that. And we're gonna change where it goes first. We're gonna put that 159,000 into a specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy. Now, you still wanna continue saving, but this is just one dump in that you're going to do into the policy, because we wanna buy a car. But we're not gonna buy a car. We're gonna have somebody else pay for the car, like I showed you. But we put the money into the policy. Now, why would we want that? because now I got 159,000 inside of a whole life policy paying me guaranteed interest plus dividends in a tax-free environment that allows me to use that money without taking the money out of my policy. Did you hear that? That was fast. Try writing that down. So you can put the money in the policy. You can then take the money out of the policy in the form of a loan without any of your 159,000 leaving. And we can design your policy to be any dollar amount you want. We could put 159,000 in this policy and then put a lot less in per month. You can do anything you want. We can design it and engineer it however you want. But let's just keep going. So the first thing we do, we put 159 in to the policy where it's going to earn a guaranteed interest rate plus dividends in excess of 5%. But then immediately in the first 30 days, we spend some time on privatemoneyclub.com. We saw that 16% private money lending opportunity. We did our due diligence. We did the underwriting. We determined it's a good risk for my goals. So I lend 140,000 to that company, that individual's company, so that they can do that project. So how do I get the 140,000 out of the policy and how long did it take? Well, I put 159 in and immediately in the first 30 days, I could take 140 out, which is my first loan. Now, when I take the loan out, the insurance company is going to charge me interest, simple interest on that loan. Now, the insurance companies are all a little different, but as of today, we have insurance companies doing it at about 5%. So 140,000 at 5% simple interest is 583.33 per month. Please write that down, 583.33 per month. That would be the cost for you to take money from your policy. But how much is the money earning in your policy? Well, it's compounding at a rate greater than that. So you can see, I'm not concerned that they're gonna charge me five because I still have 159 in there earning interest and dividends. Now, that's my cost, very important. So the first thing I do is I lend that money to that deal at 16%. Now these are the same numbers as before, so I tried going backwards. 16% gives you $1,866.66. Of that 1866 you earn from the private lending, we are going to allocate 583.33 to make sure that the loan interest is covered to the insurance company. So we already know we've covered that because we've covered it with the loan, okay? The loan we made at 16%. But here's the most important thing. We're gonna still buy that G-Wagon, except for the note that we're going to create that's gonna be $1,255 a month in payments. So now remember, I'm going to be the bank, which means I got to think like the bank. And if you were the bank, if you own the bank, who sets the rules for loans? You do, right? So we know we can borrow from the insurance company at 5%. That's kind of like a traditional bank being able to borrow from the Fed. The traditional bank can borrow on an overnight rate from the Fed. So our overnight rate, quote unquote, hypothetical, is 5% from the insurance company. But our money never left the insurance company, so it's earning compounding. When we're the bank, we also can set the terms on the loans that we decide to take. So if I'm gonna buy this G-Wagon, and the G-Wagon, if I were to have gone to any traditional bank and finance it, like Bank of America would have been 8%, wouldn't it be cool if all I did is I just said, hey, I don't wanna pay 8%, I wanna pay six. And I don't wanna do it at six years, I only wanna do it at five years. So you see how we can now just start making this note anything we want because we make the rules. 
It's our bank. You're in control. You can do anything you want here. I just will tell you, don't ever steal from your bank. Don't take a loan from your bank, lend it, and then just pay for the car and then don't pay your policy back. That's stealing from your bank. And if you owned a traditional bank and you stole from your bank, your bank would go out of business or you'd go to jail. You're not gonna go to jail when you have your own private bank for stealing from it, but it won't work. So if you were okay making a $1,255 a month payment on this G-Wagon to someone else's bank, would you have a problem making a $1,255 a month payment back to your bank? Well, you shouldn't, it's all the same. You just got to control the terms. So now back to the equation, 140,000 came from the policy, which was your money, and we lent it out at 16. So we got $1,866.66. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna send $1,255 a month over to your policy. So let's just do the math here real quick. 1255, 1255 minus our cost to borrow the money, 583.33, means we have an extra 671.67. That's our, our spread, okay? That's essentially how much extra we have after paying the cost to the insurance company. But you see, this number doesn't mean anything because if I had my own bank, None of that really matters because I'm just going to put the $1,255 a month back into my policy. What I was doing over here is I was just running different numbers, different percentages, but it doesn't matter. None of these numbers matter anymore. This was when I was doing it with somebody else's bank, but now I'm the bank. So now I'm the bank. I'm going to take $1,255 and I'm going to pay that back to the policy every month. Who made that $1,255 payment? Did I or did this person from Private Money Club? Person from Private Money Club did, right? That's right. So the $1,255 that goes back into my policy, that's a loan repayment to my policy, to my bank. How much money do you think I have every single month? $1,255. So every time I take that interest from this private lender and I put part of it back into the policy, I have $1,255 a month more. You can't do this with a traditional bank because the traditional bank doesn't take your car payment and say, hey, do you need to use that 1,255 bucks? Let us know. No, but when you own the bank, that 1,255 is your money. That's your bank's money. You're just repaying your bank back and making sure that the insurance company at the end of the year, one time, that they get paid their interest, which works out to be 583.33. But, and that number that I erased on purpose was 611.66. That's the money that you have above and beyond the car payment from the interest that you were earning on that loan. So what you do with this $611.66 is completely up to you. You could take your spouse out to dinner more often. You can take your family on a yearly vacation because that works out to be $7,336.92. That's enough for a nice vacation. You see, all I did here is showed you how changing one thing and adding one step. The step is this circle okay, called the infinite banking concept. If you wanna learn more about that, check the 90 minute video out in the bio. And then if this is intriguing or you want more info, I've got lots of other videos, but just book a call with us. Book a call with my team and we'll walk you through how this could work for you. Don't let the numbers trick you with the big hundred thousands and that, not everybody's buying a G-Wagon. I don't care if you're just buying a normal Toyota, the numbers will still work. You'll just need less money working for you. But by doing this folks, I have accomplished exactly what I set out to accomplish for you. I have showed you, at least proven to you, that it is possible to get all the money back for every car you ever buy, drive, and own. Because if you're the bank and you're making the car payments back to your bank, how much does that work out to be? Well, let's just do the math. Remember, $1,255 every single month being paid by somebody else times 12 times a five-year term. That means at the end of the five years, $75,300, which will get you a nice G-Wagon, usually about a 2016, 2017 G-Wagon. You just got all the money back, all put back into your policy, all available to you every single month you made those deposits, plus the money to take your family on vacations or take your kids out to dinner with your wife or husband, whatever you want. You were in control of all of these numbers. We can help you build these. This is what we do every single day. We build models like this for people. You give us a scenario, you tell us what your goal is, we will solve 
the problem for you by teaching you how to be your own bank. Folks, I know this was high level, but at least you see the possibility. Now I know I went through that quick and I know I left a lot out, but the best part about that is as long as I planted that worthy idea and showed you this is possible, not just possible, this is being done every single day. Now it's on you. So what you should do next is in the bio, there's a 90 minute video. Watch that video. That will give you all the details on how you get all the money back for all the cars. And then after that, book a call with us and we will show you exactly how you can do what I just taught you in that video. And while you're at it, don't forget, do a little, little subscribe there and a little smash the bell because you want notifications every time we do trainings and every single time we put out a new video. Thanks for joining me for this video. Go out there and get somebody else to pay for your freaking car for crying out loud. See you next time.